your seatbelt. It's going to be a bumpy walk. Chrissy is hilarious. Chrissy, have you ever heard of the comedian Basha K. Ali? No, that sounds like something you yell at before you blow up a plane. <laughs> 30 seconds remaining. Like, you know, what could you say? I doubt it will stand up to something. I haven't been disrespectful to you at all. I was very confused by the title, Everything, Everywhere, All at Once, because that's also what we call it when Ash takes off his shirt. (laughs) (laughs) I shouldn't be up here. I should be in school on the other side of the ocean. Hello. Happy Friday. Hope everyone's doing well. Welcome to Mayor in the Morning. What's up? What's up? What's up to the chat? Um, hello, good night, mister. Hello. Hello, filthy. Dave Phillips. Everybody's here. I was only like a minute late this morning. So I don't know what happens. I don't know if this, if people in the chat are afflicted by the same um, issue that I am. And that is, I have to go to the bathroom like exactly 10 minutes before I go live. It doesn't matter what it is. No other point in my day do I ever get the urge to go to the bathroom. But if I join, if it's 10 minutes before the show, then you better believe it. My body's like, let's go. Yeah, I heard uh, this morning, Frank woke up. He was like, uh, Nick Rakate is still live, which was probably like 630. I don't know how long he was going for it. He just was going straight, straight up all night. Does anybody know when he started? That is so crazy. All I knew is that I was listening to it. I was like, oh, that sounds like fair and balanced. And I feel like they were both drunk on the stream, like well into the wee hours. Crazy, crazy. I'm a little jealous. I think I want to get on the next one. Why not? Baron said, rackets hold my beer. Yeah. It's the pre-piss. Yeah. And sometimes it's pre more than more than that. 11 to 6. That is so crazy. He's streaming again and out. He's a machine or he's on drugs. I don't know what's going on. But I got shows coming up. Uh, Guys, next week. I can't believe it's next week already that I'm going to be in New Orleans. Because it's still, did you know that, I guess, yesterday was technically the first day of fall? There's a little bit of a nip in the air. A little bit of a nippy nip in the air. Guys, next Friday, I'm going to be in New Orleans doing four shows, uh, September 30th and October 1st in New Orleans at the Comedy House. Would love to see you there. Why not? Just take a little quick weekend trip out to New Orleans. Come hang. Come do a show. Come drink outside. Then. We got, woo, at the end of October. Uh, actually, um, I didn't I didn't put this on my calendar yet, but my show from last night was, at, uh, that was supposed to be at the Bridgeport Stress Factory, is actually being moved to October 20th. So October 20th, I will be uh, back at the Bridgeport Stress Factory. I think everyone was very concerned with watching Aaron Judge last night. He didn't hit his 61st home run. But he did some excellent, um, excellent fielding. He got a guy out from right field. So he's still an incredible player. Let's hope that he, I don't know if he's up there up against the Red Sox again tonight, but he's going to get it. He's going to get 61. It's just a matter of time. Uh, Where was I? Yeah. And then we're going to be in Florida next month at the end of next month. It's Content House, but before that, Comedians of the Compound will be at the Orlando Improv Thursday, October 27th. Come come see myself, Gino Bisconti, Anthony Cumia, Alex Stein, 99, and Lila Hart will all be at the Orlando Improv. And if you're in town for the Geeks and Gamers Friday Night Tights meetup, come to the show. It just makes perfect sense. All the people you already know and love will be here. 
Then immediately following this show at the Orlando Improv, we'll be kicking off our 48-hour live stream from the content house. We're going to go 40 straight hours. So we'll probably we'll start, obviously, Thursday night, going to Saturday night. Our goal is to start around, I guess, midnight. It's going to be a shit show. It's going to be fun. All thanks to Copy My Crypto. Uh, then I will be in Long Island Friday, November 4th and Saturday, November 5th at the Brokerage Comedy Club. Yes, my Long Islanders. I want to see you guys out here. If I went to high school with you, this is the show for you. Come see me in Belmore in early November. Then we got a Compound Media Censored TV show Thursday, November 10th, the day before my birthday. So much for a birthday weekend. It's okay. It's good to work. Um, Thursday, November 10th. Uh, this show will be announced the day of in New York City. But get your tickets now. Then I'll be back in Jersey headlining in New Brunswick at the Stress Factory in New Brunswick Thursday, November 17th. Then I'm heading to California uh, in February. I'll be in San Diego February 24th and 25th at Mike Drop Comedy Come see me in California. Excited about all these dates. I'm pumped. I'm pumped. The shows have been going great. I've been writing new jokes. We're having fun. We're having fun. Making fun of people who sit in the front row as per usual. Yeah. I'm just checking on the chat. Um, Yeah, it was funny. Sometimes I really have like boomer moments and... Yesterday, me and Frank are watching the game, and all of a sudden, I hear a voice come from my comu- computer, and I was like, "Is that Nvidia? Like one of my mods? Like that sounds like Nvidia." And, and, and like she was trying to talk to me. She basically told me that because I went into Discord yesterday, and <laughs> apparently, I clicked on one of my channels. I don't know. I was trying to be a good Discord person and go in there and look at messages and connect with the people. Apparently I went in there, I clicked on the wrong thing. I clicked on like a movie channel and I apparently was in there in a voice channel for six hours by myself. And NVIDIA was just like talking to me through my computer to let me know that I was like, that people could hear what was going on. And I was like, what did you hear? (laughs) So I think she just heard us talking about the, uh, the baseball game. Either that or, or she's being really nice and she heard more and she's just trying to be polite. So, yep, never going to go on Discord ever again. That's that's it for me. I'm learning. <laughs> I feel like good day, Mr. Nose. I feel like you know. <laughs> He's laughing in the chat. Tell me what you heard. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> eh. If you're in a voice chain on Discord, your mic is on. But okay, this is a directional mic. So isn't it only going to pick up like what's right here? How much could this really pick up? I don't know. I don't know about these things. (sighs) Good night, mister. I thought I was losing my mind. What were you hearing? I mean, it's not like anything too crazy was going on. But you know what is crazy? I was I was in the I was in the channel. See, I'm trying. I'm trying to be in the Discord. It picks up whatever is loud enough to be heard. What the fuck does that mean? <sighs> okay. Guys, Johnny Depp is dating his lawyer. And it's not the person we thought. It's the lawyer from the other the other trial, from the UK trial. This is straight out of Hollywood life, so we know it's legit. Johnny Depp reportedly dating married lawyer with two kids who worked on his UK libel trial. Johnny Depp may have lost his UK libel case. Wow, this this chick looks just like George Clooney's chick. Um, what the hell is her name? Amal. He may have lost his UK libel case, but he gained a lady. But he may have won a new love, as he's reportedly dating Joel Rich, one of the lawyers who misrepresented him in that trial. Oh, who represented him, not misrepresented. <laughs> Interesting. Johnny Depp supposedly has a new romance in his life. Wow, and doesn't she look like the freaking opposite of Amber Heard? Maybe he's like, I need to pick a different type. 
uh, the 59 year old actor is seeing lawyer Joel Rich. According to U.S. Weekly, Joel was part of Depp's U.K. legal team in his libel case against The Sun, but wasn't part of Johnny's team when he sued his ex-wife, Amber Heard. She was present in the Virginia courtroom to show her support, which U.S. Weekly notes was unusual because there was no professional obligation for her to be there. Ah! It was personal. The publication also reports that Johnny and Joel's chemistry is off the charts. And it's serious between them. They are the real deal. Ooh. I want to see more pictures of them together. Let's view the gallery. Who that? No, those are his kids. I want to see pictures of him and the lawyer. Okay, this is just a gallery of Johnny Depp photos. Um, okay. Okay, his kids. All right, this is boring. Okay, that's his ex-wife, right, Vanessa? Wow, they were together a long time. Who's this? Is this his girlfriend? No, that's his mom. <laughs> okay, I did not see pictures of him with the lawyer. It's just this one. Maybe they're not public about it. But they have chemistry. Depp and Rich allegedly discreetly met up in hotels during the early stages of their romance. According to U.S. Weekly, the publication source, source notes that Joelle was married when she first met Johnny. Ooh, scandalous. But now is in the process of divorcing her estranged husband. The two of them share two children. Hollywood Life has reached out to Depp's rep for comment on this report. I've got a feeling somebody's watching me. Wow, that that Depp Heard trial was so freaking arduous and boring at times. Like, you must really love him to sit through that. In 2020, Johnny lost his libel case in the UK after he sued the son for calling him a wife beater. The judge presided, presiding over the case ruled that the son had proved the claim to be substantially true and that he found 12 of the 14 alleged domestic violence incidents had occurred. According to the BBC, in 2021, Depp lost his bid to overturn the ruling. He had asked the Court of Appeal to permit him to challenge the ruling, but Lord Justice Underhill and Lord Justice Dingleman, Din Dingleman, Dingeman, emphasized that an appeal against the trial's judge's decision on questions of disputed fact faced serious difficulties. I don't know what that means. As to why Depp was successful in his lawsuit against Heard, 36, when he failed in the UK, George Freeman, the executive director of the Media Law Resource Center, told the Washington Post that the answer is simple. It was up to the jury. Ooh. During the trial, Depp was romantically linked to his lawyer, Camille Vasquez. She shot down these rumors in an interview with People. Yeah, this was Camille Vasquez. Remember her? She was like the kind of like hot, sassy one. Also a brunette, though. Are we seeing a trend? Maybe his type is lawyers now. It's disappointing that certain outlets kind of ran with it or said that my interactions with Johnny, who was a friend I've known and represented for four and a half years now, that my interactions in any way were inappropriate or unprofessional. That's disappointing to hear. But it's also life, girl. If you're cute and they see you getting along with like, Someone else who's cute or famous, people are going to assume that. Vasquez said at the time she was very happy in my relationship and that it is un was unethical for a lawyer to date one of their clients. It's also an unethical charge being made. It's sexist, she said. It's unfortunate and disappointing. But at the same time, it kind of comes with the territory, and I can't say I was all that surprised. Ooh. I forget how old he is. He's been around. Oh, wow. All these other articles look so horrible. Yeah, no thanks. I just want Johnny Depp to be happy. I think that's all we, that's all any of us want. Camille had massive cans. Yeah, that helps too. <laughs> Lord Lord Rutherford. I would do the entire stream in this accent. I feel like I want to because I just watched uh, 
last night I was up watching two episodes of Rings of Power. I watched, holy cow. And I do kind of like the Don Lemon character. I don't dislike him. And I watched the first episode of Andor, which was so boring. I was really trying hard to like put it into uh, like the line of events. I was like, when is this taking place? Who is this? What the fuck is going on? Why should I care? Literally the whole first episode of Andor looked like all the pictures and video that I saw from the Galactic Star Cruiser. I was like, to me, it looks like they're just trying to sell um you know hotel reservations no yeah lemon lemon lass <sighs> sorry i'm yawning <clears throat> andrew thomas would date me if i was a hot lawyer or a hot librarian wow that's it andrew just those two jobs what about a hot comedian what about a hot podcaster so picky I need coffee too. I need like yesterday I bought a gigantic venti iced coffee and it took me like many hours to drink like almost all day. It's so good though. Once it hits your lips, there's something about the way that Starbucks does the, the it was vanilla cold brew. And I think it also had sweet cold foam on the top. Oh, so good. Wait, I got a tip about New Orleans. It's hot as hell in NOLA. Make sure you dress appropriately. Looking forward to seeing your show next week. Awesome, Josh. Excited to see you too. All right, so so shorts is what you're saying. I mean, I can't really wear shorts on stage. I'll do a dress. What is sweet cold foam? Girl. Yeah, it is basically whipped cream. But Starbucks makes their own sweet cold foam. I think they whip up different flavors. Like they have a pumpkin one, a vanilla one. I think they have a chocolate one as well. It's so good. It's so good. Let's see what's going on with the New York Post. God, all these stories are such a bummer. Dang. Oh, my God. Somebody got... There is footage of a guy sucker punching a flight attendant. This is what's kind of neat about everybody having a cell phone is that this kind of footage can be caught right away. I'm sure you guys heard about this. And then, yes, we will be getting to our special guest in about 10 minutes. Very exciting. No, it's not keto. It's not keto, but it's freaking delicious. CJ, hail Chrissy. Thank you for Frostcast. I spit out my drink multiple times. Yeah, that did really well. I was really surprised. Um, I'm so glad that people liked it. It was really just two hours of improvising, basically. And uh, both Az and Nina were really good at kind of like, yes, anding everything that I was putting out. But yeah, I got a there's a few clips I want to make from that. Because there were some really funny lines. Fucking Zipper. Yeah, Zipper's great. As a Zipper is iconic. I don't care what anybody says. Okay. A passenger was sucker, sucker punched a flight attendant over a coffee snub? This was over a coffee snub? Okay, we're going to watch this. This guy was so dumb. What was he thinking? Oh, my God. Oh, what would you guys have done? It's the shock of it. Like, nobody's ready for this. I think nobody was prepared. And then he just goes and sits in his seat. He goes back to his seat five rows away. Dramatic music. Okay, then they edit it a little bit. Then he goes back to sit. It's one thing if you're like, I'm in the bowels of economy. I am in the back by the bathrooms of a coach. But this guy was not. He was basically, I don't know, middle class. There's no middle class on a plane. I think he was looking at first class going, man, that's good. That should be me up there. I'm good enough. I'm smart enough. Gosh darn it. People like me. Why, why, why can't I get the first class snacks? And then the flight attendant was probably like, no, dude, it's for flight first class. And then he fucking punched him. Detained by the FBI over coffee? What did he want? 
Oh, American Airlines. That's my airline. I have a mileage card with them. The American Airlines passenger caught on video punching a flight attendant went berserk when told to wait for coffee. That's it? Oh, man. He also claimed there were 10 killers on the plane. What the fuck? According to officials and a witness, Alexander Tung Su Lee, more like see you later, 33 of Westminster, California, was charged with interference with flight crew. That's it. Uh, members and attendants for his meltdown on the plane to Los Angeles on Wednesday, officials said. Uh, Lee exited his seat while flight while flight attendants were conducting food and beverage service. Lee grabbed one flight attendant's left shoulder from behind and asked for coffee. The U.S. Attorney Office from the, for the Central District in California said in a statement. Moments later, Lee allegedly grabbed both of the flight attendants' shoulders from behind after the flight attendant stepped back and put up a defensive posture. Lee walked to the front of the airplane, which you're not supposed to do. Okay, I've only flown first class once in my whole life, and it was because there was an angel flight attendant that looked at me uh, looking unbrushed and tired, and she said, girl, go sit in the, there's a seat, there's a first class seat with your name on it. I was like, what? Ah! It was the best day of my life. So I think it's important to gatekeep first class. <laughs> After the flight attendant stepped back and put up a defensive posture, Lee walked to the front of the airplane. Lee then allegedly loitered. Ah, this is what you're not supposed to do. You can't loiter. He loitered near the first class cabin and then sat in an unoccupied aisle near the wall, dividing the first class cabin and the main cabin of the aircraft. Ooh, so he was lingering. He really wanted his coffee. He could not wait. He's like, look, he probably was flying to go visit his parents. And he's like, I'm not fucking awake enough for this. A different flight attendant approached Lee and requested that Lee return to his seat. Lee did not comply and allegedly stood up and assumed a fighting stance toward the flight attendant by making closed fists with both of his hands. Oh, so he went like that first? Oh, what a loser. When the crew member went to report the disturbance to the captain, Lee, oh, this is when he ran up on him like that, punched him in the head. Kind of like the back neck area. What was he thinking was going to happen to him? He was moved to a different row while his hands and legs were tied. <laughs> uh, where's the video footage of that? I'm going to see them hog tie this Asian dude. Lee continuously unbuckled his seatbelt, causing fly tents to restrain him to the seat with seatbelt extenders. That's great. That's fun. Like the day of uh, flight attendant training where you have to learn how to restrain somebody just with like the tools around you. Be like, look, you got to wrap the seatbelt around them. You got to dump hot coffee on them. You got to subdue them any way you can. <laughs> Put a cookie in their hand. Wow. A 30 second recording made by a fellow passenger, Barry Livingston, who was in first class, by the way. Shows a male flight attendant standing in the middle of the aisle and asking a passenger, are you threatening me? The crew member then turns his back on the unruly passenger who runs up to the employee from behind and strikes him from the back of the head with a closed fist. A witness told ABC Chicago. The suspect also made a chilling remark before the assault, whispering that there are 10 killers on the plane. <laughs> what? That's creepy. American Airlines said the passenger will never be allowed to travel with us in the future. Wow. Lifetime ban. I could see him uh, flying Spirit. He seems like it'd be funny if Spirit was like, you know what? We'll give you a lifetime of free flights. We like your moxie. <sighs> we thank our crew for their quick action and professionalism to ensure the safety of their fellow team members and customers on board. Our thoughts are with our injured flight attendant. Is he injured? Uh, and we are ensuring that they and their fellow crew members have the support they need at this time. If I were the flight attendant, I'd be rolling up with one of those neck braces. I'd be like, uh, <laughs> pay up, American. Lee, who faces maximum of 20 years in federal lockup if the charges are committed. Damn, you could face 20 years for punching a flight attendant. 
he's expected to make his first court appearance on Thursday in Los Angeles. This creep should not be allowed to fly on commercial flights anymore. This is the effect of the past six years. Individuals now truly believe it is all right to treat others in any fashion they see fit. Civility is no longer displayed. Damn. You know what? Maybe he's just trying to defy Asian stereotypes. He's like, look, everyone just sees us as studious and hardworking and quiet. Let me mix it up a little bit. Wow. Well, best of luck. Clip his ween? What? <laughs> yeah, the flight attendant was a white male, so that does make it okay. Yeah. Some Ting Wong. <laughs> Curly leg hair for five. Morning. Woke up to Farron being sloppy drunk on Rakita's stream. Total bimbo energy. Yeah. Very bimbo. I love Farron. Where has she been all my life? We have like the same background. Pretty similar. Like we both were in improv. She in Chicago. Me in New York. And then she went to be a reporter. And then I do whatever this is but she is so easy to talk to so funny i could definitely see her getting into stand-up yeah the democrat the democrat party does encourage this kind of behavior oh yeah oh yeah it's crazy we gotta respect our flight attendants i heard that if you give them gifts that they will hook you up like if you give them um like a nice chocolate bar or something from not like a shirt or anything, but if you give them like a nice treat or something from the airport, then they may hook you up. I think I'm going to try this for my New Orleans flight. I'm going to see if they hook us up or, um, you know, get us a free drink or maybe promote us to first class. <gasps> okay. Let's see what's interesting. Oh, someone's trying to sue DeSantis over the Martha's Vineyard migrant flights? What? <coughs> oh, my God. Gwyneth Paltrow. It's been a while since we've heard from her, right? Oh, Young Pei Chang. Young Pei Chang, why did you punch that flight attendant? What's wrong? Was it really about the coffee or was it about something else? Okay, let's talk about Gwyneth Paltrow. Do you know that she's embracing her loosening skin? <laughs> what other choice do you have? You either embrace your loosening skin or you get work done and then people are critical of you for it. Um, and she was in a bikini before turning 50. Good for her. She looks great. From far away. Gwyneth Paltrow is gearing up for her 50th birthday with an unfiltered bikini photo. This is it? This is the unfiltered bikini photo? Your, your hair is covering your face and you're far away. The actress who will celebrate the milestone on ooh, five days from now showed her loosening skin and wrinkles while rocking a bathing suit in a black and white Instagram photo. Ooh, let's pull up the Instagram. Oh, come on. This is it? I'm going to pull up this other Instagram photo. This is not that big a deal. This is the big article generating photo. It's black and white. Boo. What's the big deal? She's frolicking. Okay. Okay. Musings on a milestone. Paltrow captioned the snap directing her followers to a goop blog post. I used to subscribe to goop and then I was like, oh, I don't have $50 to spend on fucking candles. That's why I had to unsub because I was getting depressed. Um, Her body is less timeless. What? Strangely, no sense of time has passed. All right. My body is a map of the evidence of all the days, a collection of marks and irregularities that dog ear the chapters, scarred over from oven burns, a finger smashed in a window, the birth of a child, silver hair and fine lines. 
Gwyneth Paltrow is like, I invented aging. Look at me. Wow, do you know that Apple Martin is 18 years old? Holy crap. She's old enough to change her name now to something normal. And Moses noted that she works to combat reckless thoughts that try to derail her acceptance of her aging body. This is what happens when you have too much time on your hands. <laughs> you get to focus on your body. Like, ah, I'm, am I comfortable with it aging? Yes, I am. Let's tell the world. I accept my body. Blah, blah, blah. She's defying humanity. I accept my humanity. Okay. She's a hero, guys. Because she's accepting her aging. Look, doesn't she look great? I mean, she doesn't look 50. She looks moisturized, well slept. Good for her. Is this Apple? Oh, she's so cute. She's so pretty. She does look more like Gwyneth, though. This is Apple and what? Orange? What's this kid's name? I don't know. Oh, Apple and Moses. They should have named him Orange. That would have been great. Okay. Big deal. You're not a hero, Gwyneth. I was a fool for clicking on this article. I regret it. All right, you know what I won't regret? Is having our next guest on. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't listen to his podcast, you're an idiot because it's hilarious and it's one of my absolute favorites. So this is my, like, who are these podcasts is my go-to, me and Frank's go-to podcast that we listen to and download for flights, long drives. It's always the go-to. So I'm so happy that he is here with me today to go over the latest drama on our, about our good friend, Stutcho. Welcome to the show, Carl. Thanks, Chrissy. What a segue. You are a pro, I have to tell you. Well done. Thanks. Are you ever not broadcasting? I don't know no, how you do it. Never not. Yesterday, I didn't. Uh, and Frank got mad at me. So He's you a... mentioned that Apple's 18 years old now, so we can talk about her. We can talk shit. Yes. Right? Her <laughs> eyes are way too far apart. She's a space alien, right? She's a lizard person. Yeah, I don't know what can be done to, if there's a something that can be done to bring the eyes closer together. You got to drill new holes. That sounds yeah. dangerous. <laughs> they got to do something. Let's see. Let's go back to the. Do a, do an image search on uh, Apple. Oh, Mac. yes. An, an Apple. An apple, apple Paltrow. That sounds like a drink. Ooh, I'll have one. Or it's no, she is. She's Apple Martin. Yeah. Apple Martin. Yeah, and like the the second image on Google, I clicked out. I'm like, whoa. She has to have uh, two different zip codes for her face. Oh, I mean, she's a pretty girl, but <laughs> her eyes are really yeah. far apart. There's definitely a picture of her when she's younger, where her eyes look very far apart. I'm sure there's makeup trips, tricks, and such that she can do. Like she looks almost. Cross like what's the opposite of cross eyed when yeah, your eyes right. go out independently? <laughs> I had a cat that looked like that once. It wasn't good. Okay, yeah, she'll be fine. Other she'll than that, fine. she's, she's good. Sorry, she'll be all right. She's very she'll, pretty. She's very pretty <laughs> for uh, a hammerhead shark. <laughs> yeah, she looks like she'd be in a bar in Star Wars. You're like, whoa, <laughs> avoid that one. Oh, yeah, Chris Mack, I was going to do a Mayor in the Afternoon stream yesterday, and then I deleted it because I had to go to get a new phone. My phone is, like, on its last legs, and you I had to go get people? a new phone. I sat, I fucking hate Verizon so fucking much. And Verizon has now become, like, a government utility or, like, a government service because, like, they know they have everyone by the balls. It's like, what are you going to do? Are you going to switch providers? You're not. Uh, because that's too much of a pain in the ass and most people don't bother doing that. So it's like, I'm in there. They put me on a wait list for an hour. We go, we get coffee. We're running out. They said, Oh, we're going to call you Th thinking they're going to call me on my phone to let me know when it's my turn or whatever, or text me or something. And so we come back even, even like in less than an hour, I walk and I go, I was like, is it my turn yet? And they're like, Oh, we called you. You weren't here. So we took your name off the list. I was like, what the fuck? I'm like, no, I don't have a missed call from you. They're like, Oh no, we called your name inside the store. I'm like, you didn't fucking say that. And they're like, we also texted you. I'm like, no, you fucking didn't. Like, there's no text here. This is the confirmation. When I was on the list, there's no more texts after that. I was like, 
oh, we can put you on the list again and wait another hour. Or we can make it and make an I, appointment. I love how they act like, like they have a, a waiting room or something. Is there a highlights magazine you're supposed to be penning through no, as you're waiting for like, this? Come on. You can you can only look through the same like 25 phone cases in chargers yeah. for so long. Like you right. can only do so many laps. It's Just text me the when Verizon you're ready. store is fucking perpetually. There's 15 people waiting and there's two people working there. Like it never changes. You know how I know Verizon's a ripoff? My current plan that I have with my wife. I got the family plan, my wife. We added a third phone line that I do not use. I do not even have a third phone because it was cheaper for some reason. That's how you know it's a ripoff. Well, if we package it with another number, then we can actually get you this discount. You're like, it doesn't make any sense. You could have done a burner account with that. I should have. I should have. I should be uh, texting somebody with that. It could be your sock phone account. It could be like a pretend I'm a hot chick out in uh, Calabasas. Oh, my God. Okay, this is from NVIDIA. To be fair, you were broadcasting yesterday. You just didn't know it for a few hours. Wow, (laughs) NVIDIA. Whoops. NVIDIA won't tell me whether or not she heard me and Frank having sex. And uh, I guess I appreciate that. I guess I appreciate that. Because it'd be funny if, like, the tips are coming in. They're like, oh, shit. (laughs) I was on a Discord yesterday, unknowingly, on my yeah. voice channel. I had it going for like six hours, like a fucking boomer. That's scary. And and so NVIDIA had to like speak to me through the computer, like, you're in the thing. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, thank God it was like one of my mods and not like, you know, some random fucking weirdo. At least you got back at them when you changed all the phones' backgrounds. I did. I went and I put my face on like all the the backgrounds and like the lock screens for all the phones nice they didn't know they don't know what's gonna hit them i like that you're getting famous one phone in a verizon store at a time good job chrissy yeah, people are gonna open <laughs> up and be like who the, the fuck is this weirdo <laughs> i used to work uh, at uh this company called e-bombs world do you remember e-bombs world it was a i've heard website, of it very, very popular website around the uh 2000s i've heard now. of eddie bauer <laughs> <laughs> it's not any Bauer. It's Ebon's world. <laughs> but it's funny because that became a really huge, successful site. It was like YouTube before YouTube was YouTube. And uh, the guy, Ebon, who started it, would go to like the community college and make all of the uh, browsers open up to his website. Like that was the way that he started getting it popular. That's what I just oh, reminded wow. you of that. Like you going on these phones and, and making sure that your face is the background. Yeah. I should have just put my, uh, I don't know. A QR code to my website or something. Uh, from Marcos. People and in the Mom. chat, no, no e bombs. Very popular <laughs> oh, okay. site. Very popular. Okay, it does sound familiar. Christy, when are you performing in Boston? You're hilarious. F's in the chat for Zippers Breakthrough. That stream was priceless. Thank you so much, Marcos. Yeah, I had some things set up in Boston before the pandemic, uh, so I got to circle back to them and reschedule. Uh, I think it was Laugh Boston that I had something. But it's good to know. It's always good to know. And guys, if you ever, this goes for Carl too. If there's, if you live somewhere and you're like, hey, I really want Carl or Christy to like come to my city or town, it helps if you incessantly tag like whatever nearby venue or like favorite comedy club. Like if you keep tagging them and mentioning the names of the people you want to see, like they do take note of that. So do that. Speaking of which, I will be in New York City. Yes, November uh, October fifteenth. <laughs> I'll do my own plug. I appreciate it. Ah! October fifteenth, we're doing a live show of Who Are These Podcasts at the City Winery in Manhattan, and you can get tickets for that. There's a link on our website, whoarethese.com, or if you want to go directly to it, it's watpnyc.com to get tickets to our live show. We're gonna have uh, some great guests on there. I believe one Anthony Cumia will be swinging Ooh. by to be on it. Uh, we'll have Brian Johnson from Tell Him Steve Dave. We'll wow. be on there, and would you kindly? I'd uh, speak to would you kindly. E Rock will be by. We'll have the whole. E Rock is gonna come through. Wow. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. So, I hope to see uh, all the Chrissy Mayerites out at Who Are These Podcasts. I hope so too. I'm so sad I can't be there. I have fucking Frank's brother's rehearsal dinner that night. Can we break them up or something? I know. Can we Maybe sabotage we could... the relationship. If we can sabotage the relationship before then, yeah. I might be able to come. Then you can come. But I've also been like. You know, I've been working out. I'm trying to look good as a bridesmaid. Not better than the bride, of course. You can't say that. But I'm almost trying to look, you know. All right, fine. I want to look better than the bride. 
And I have right, my dress I'll, already. I'll, I, I feel like you want me to sim for you. Chrissy, you're nailing it. All right. Stop Is that what you it. Want me to say? Oh, yeah, there you go. Stop <laughs> it. Go on. <laughs> you know who we both sim for a lot is one stuttering John. Another and brilliant segue. There are a couple. She's so on it. Ah! <laughs> I'm really, I'm really coming into my own lately. You are. <laughs> it sounds sexual. So, oh God, I had a funny dream the other night that the CEO of Blaze, like, took me in for a meeting and was like, I don't know if the feeling was that he was going to offer me a show, but it's a, it was such a randomly specific dream. I don't know. Did Anytime you, you have a after that. No, oh, I know. Okay. Usually it'd be like me, like, you know, in the dream, I'm putting my hair in a ponytail and rolling up my sleeves and like <laughs> spitting into my hands. But yeah. that did that's, not that's happen. That's what I was picturing too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. It's how we get shows here. Wait, from Torgo, the white Farron was great. New Simcast regular. Yes, I am going to get her on a Simcast uh, sometime in October. I think we have a date for her. Okay. So before we launch into what I specifically wanted to go over about Stut Joe, I think the last time we spoke, he was trying to, or maybe it was when I did your show with Florentine. Uh, I love that, by the way, like people clipped out the point where I was, it was a hot mic and I was like, the Jews are taking over upstate New York, but they clipped out the part where I said upstate New York. So it just sounds like I'm saying the Jews are taking over. Yeah. There, there was a whole debate over whether you were serious or not, which tells me that these people <laughs> are really grasping at straws with that one. They're like, see, she's an anti-Semite. Like, right, we knew it. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And, okay, the latest at that point was that Stuttering John was trying to sue you, trying to – basically, they, for people who are not familiar, there's been, like, an ongoing battle. Stuttering John – it was what sending you cease and desists like wants you to stop using his patreon or his podcast episodes in your show yeah well it's a little funnier than that because in the <laughs> cease and desist that i let chrissy and frank read he does admit that because he's a public figure we are allowed to use clips of his show and comment on it but what he accused me of doing in the cease and desist was um going after his children going after the school that he's a substitute teacher at going after his comedy gigs to get them canceled. He could be doing all this nefarious stuff behind the scenes. And Chrissy, I'm a lazy, lazy man. I, I'm lucky I put out two episodes a week of Who Are These Podcasts. There's no way yeah, I'm making phone calls. Yeah, it's all you can do. <laughs> like, you do so much prep for your shows. Yeah, you wouldn't have time to do anything else. Yeah, it's, it's enough already. I don't have time for that shit. Also, the idea that I'd want to cancel John's gigs, when John does a stand-up show and I get audio of it, I have five hours of material from just a 40 yeah. minute set. So I do not you, want anything he does canceled ever. You want him to keep doing things. Of like if anything, you'd like rent a bus out to send people to like, that's what we should do. Maybe I'll call Ron DeSantis. I'll be like, how can we send these migrants to stuttering John's stand up gigs? <laughs> yeah, be packed. To just like pack, you know, just to paper the audience. We tried to book stuttering John uh, back a couple of years ago. Cause uh, I know all the owners of the comedy club here. And uh, they were trying to get this tour going with uh, who's the porn star who's now in jail for rape. Um, Army the, Hammer? No. no, no, he's not a porn star. No, the the super famous fat guy. Oh, uh, yeah, Drawing of course. Um, Jeremy. Yes, Ron Jeremy. Ron Jeremy. So Ron Jeremy and Stuttering John were trying to do this like comedy tour thing, and they what? put it on on Twitter like, "Hey, we're doing this tour, so book us." So we we called them from the club and tried to book him. They wanted like $10,000 or something ridiculous. It's like, we, we won't, we won't sell more than 20 tickets to this thing. And they're so all going to be there to laugh the, at you. You were trying to book the two of them. Yeah. And it was a uh, Brian Dunkelman too. It was a three of them. Dunkelman. Yeah. You know, who that is no, but it He's sounds cool like guy. Newman. It sounds like Dunkelman. It's Dunkelman a was the guy who was the co-host of American Idol along with Ryan Seacrest in the first season. And then Dunkelman left that show to go on to bigger and better things, except for whoops. <laughs> nope. <laughs> so he did not. That's what he's known for. Oh, wow. Okay. So you've actually tried to book them. So we did and... try to book Stuttering John because I, I would love to get John more gigs and to get him out there doing his comedy. Me too. Maybe he would open for me. If he if only he would unblock me from Twitter. He's a headliner, Chrissy. He doesn't feature. He would never, ever be able to, of all his jokes, just pick out enough for maybe 20 or 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that a new drawing behind you? Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I redid my uh, studio with a bunch of fan art that's all over the walls now. Oh, People wow. do amazing fan art for who are these podcasts. And this one behind me is, uh, I don't know how well you can see it, but it's uh, Stuttering John in front of his green screen that's actively falling down. And you can see all the boxes <laughs> behind him. That's so good. Yeah, it's great. It's really fun. Uh, I wish there was a way you could like print out a GIF, like the GIF of him, like seeing the roach and like falling oh. backwards is like one of my favorite <laughs> you, you things. You wish you could print that out and just have it on a loop? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah. That'd be funny. I feel like we have the technology for that. Sure. That's good. So you took down all your Star Wars stuff. I did. Yeah. It wasn't yeah. right for the branding of the show. I didn't even care about Star Wars that much. It just happened to be how I decorated this room, and then I turned it into a studio, and I was like, I should probably actually make this uh, Who Are These Podcasts studio now. I like love a, it. Like do you, you need to get, like, a Why Do I Podcast poster. Oh, I do have one of those. It's actually, I don't Who know. Who started I, that? I don't know if you can see this. Hold on. Oh, wow. We're getting the full yeah. look around. You, Dabble. Oh, my God. Oh, that Dabble poster is amazing. There's our review girl, Vic. <gasps> I want to get a Dabble poster. I don't know where I'd put it, but I want one. Yeah, we got some cool art. But anyway, over there in the corner is someone who made a Why Do I Podcast, <laughs> and it's got Opie with a bird brain and Suttering John with his Nudes Max uh, mic, and it's just a lot of good oh, stuff fuck. that came in, so I decided to print it up and put it up on the walls. What was the origin of the Why Do I Podcast? That was Tony Michaels was trying to make fun of me, so he was going... <laughs> He was going, oh, what about that Kevin guy from Why Do I Podcast? I was like, yeah, I don't, I don't even know what Kevin? his show is. Yeah, he was calling me Kevin from Why Do I Podcast. Thinking that that was a funny joke. It was going to burn me real good. Like, no, I, okay, that's fine, buddy. Wow. What a cod basket. <sighs> yeah. That's my new. I'm trying to get more creative with insults because I don't want to get, uh, especially with Twitter. I'm going to call people yeah. dingbats instead of saying cunt. Dingbats is good. You know what's a great one? Actually, there's a lot of D words that are funny. Like a, a dimwit's pretty dolt. good. I, I love dolt. Yeah, dolt's just and like, it really says do, it all. Doltod. <laughs> <laughs> Which, by the way, is not a word. It's dotard. <laughs> it's, it's how oh. you pronounce it. And, and so John looked up this word dotard and calls Trump a dotard. And then people go, don't you hate the R word? You, you know, you shouldn't be saying this. Like, no, it's a real word. Dotard. It's a <laughs> no, step it's up from a retard. It's a dotard. <laughs> exactly. Do a tard, a female tard. <laughs> Ray. <laughs> Your singing uh, voice is just magical. For, <laughs> for v. By the way, I have to tell you, Chrissy, everyone loves your stuttering John. And I don't impression. understand why. <laughs> I know, but everyone loves yours the most. I, I was on uh, with Drew and Mike, and they were asking me who does the best stuttering John impression. I said producer Chris because he does the deep fake videos. But they all said they love your stuttering John impression the wow. most. Wow. I think I'm going to do it the live show in New York. Instead of like a, uh, a rap battle, we're going to do like a stuttering John impression yes. battle. Yes. Oh, my God. Now I'm really <laughs> feeling pre-FOMO here. Seriously. I would love to see a Stutcho, Stutcho rap battle from Anthony B. Look, 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 love you, 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 bo bo both stuttering John. Thanks, Anthony. Wow. Thank you, Anthony. Uh, Yeah. Anytime I see like a new Twitter account, I'm like, this is stuttering John. This is what's happening. OK, so so let's, the people are up to date. So um. There was the cease and desist that he he supposedly called the Rochester police, supposedly talked to. I, yeah. I was any of it true or he was just trying to make you feel threatened. I have an update on that. So John went out and tweeted that he talked to the RPD, my local police department, about getting me arrested. And they talked about it on a show. I have a friend in the RPD. I talked to him. He looked through all the records. There's no John Melendez anywhere. And they he take, never called. They never called. He just, he just made it up. He's just a liar. What a fucking liar. Yeah. And then wow. he got my um, he got a copyright strike against my YouTube channel. And I had to take down a YouTube video. Or he got it taken down. And he had already done that with Patreon against me, too. And both times, I put in a counter notification that says, no, this is fair use. It's transformative. And so he gets the way that the law works, DMCA, he has 10 days to then file a federal lawsuit to prove that he's taking this copyright seriously. And both times, he hasn't done it. So I got to put everything back up. Shuley just got a copyright strike by stuttering John. He had to take down a video. He's fighting it. Damn. John is just, I don't know. He's just throwing haymakers into the wind right now. <laughs> Yeah, this is from Shuli. Um, this was tweeted out two days ago. Um, this is from Shuli. Remember the show and person that John wouldn't mention because he doesn't care and it doesn't bother him. Well, guess who was working late last night? You've tried this with Who Are These Pod and failed. Get ready to fail again, you pussy. The Uncle Rico <laughs> show will make you care. And this is strike 
wow, they, this is from when he, I guess he struck him on September 21st. Uh, and then it said content removed by John Melendez. So I guess he was able to take down a whole episode of his. Yeah, yeah that's what he did to me, too. Damn. But now it's back up, and Shuli's will get his back up, too, and it's just going to draw more attention to it. I'm so surprised that there isn't a Twitter handle, like, at Beloved Chatter at this point. <laughs> I'm sure there is. Right, oh, I said that. Dirt. <laughs> Why is there no at Beloved Chatter yet? A Beloved Chatter's beloved one. Let's see if it's taken. Beloved chatter. I love, when Anthony, I love when Anthony talks about it. Dude, he's like, he's really, nope, it doesn't exist. He's really fired up uh, yeah. his rhetoric well, about stuttering John. Chrissy, did you see what John did yesterday? You no. Haven't. So yesterday's show, John had the great uh, Richard Ojeda on, one of his favorite guests, one of his only friends. And he decided to bring up the uh, Danny Brand video. Uh oh! And he started playing, and so they did about 30, 40 minutes just on what a piece of shit Anthony is. So that's that'll be fun. That'll that'll go well for John. Damn. Yeah. Oh damn! It's I on. gotta watch that. It's it's at the end of his uh, episode. It's a, the episode's like two and a half hours long. So just like scrub through everything. It's boring as fuck, and then get to and that part. Anthony has described has uh, has gone through the details of that so many times. I, I know, but it's so funny too because. Richard Ojeda doesn't know what Anthony is. So every time John's going, isn't this guy a piece of shit? You know, he's he's going, yeah, and so is Matt Gates, And he's, like, trying to bring it back to, like, actual uh, Republicans that people know. And John's like, yeah, yeah but Anthony Kubia, though, too. And it's like, what are you doing? And John even at one point, I'm going to have clips on it to, for my show tomorrow. But at one point, John even goes, this isn't personal. It's, she's just a piece of shit. Like, no, it's personal. He talked about your kid. <laughs> John, it's, it's, we know it's personal. Can't lie oh, to yes. us. His whole his motivation for everything he does in life is personal. Yes, correct. Just vengeance. This was really <laughs> funny. This is out of the Dabblers Anonymous subreddit, the beloved subreddit. Uh, this is Stuttering John. I guess he had this guy Elon on. I'm not sure who Elon is. If he's like another Elon political... Gold. Elon oh, Gold. okay. Very, very funny comedian. Oh, oh, this is Elon Gold. Okay, I know yeah. who that is. Yeah, he's great. He was really How good on the they... show. He... How did they he become John friends? Face. Well, so Elon Gold used to do this Howard Stern impression, and back in the 90s, he would get on the Stern show because Howard took notice, and he would come on. Back when Howard was a good show, they'd bring comedians on during the news segment. He was one of the guys. Oh, wow. Okay, so they're still buds. So this is Stuttering John avoiding a question with Elon. Yeah, this is just a live TV show. Watching the visual. Is this also an audio podcast, or is this just a live TV show, so to speak? It's... Uh... Well, these are like just for my paying, like, right? The, the Patreon. So you think Elon is trolling him, I or do. just trying to be friends, or well, both? So I watched this whole episode, and it's on our latest episode of Who Are These Podcasts? <laughs> this is a beer on the balcony, and uh, so what happens is thirty minutes into the conversation, Elon tries to get out of it. He's like, "Well, you know, John, uh, I got a lot of stuff going on today," <laughs> so, and John's like, "Nope." I got more questions for you. We, you're doing great. We got to keep you on there. So oh, he tries to get no. out of the conversation like three different times. So I think at this point he's going, John, I feel like I'm wasting my time here. Is there anyone even watching this? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> kind of things. Patreon and YouTube. And got it. What, what got these it. people love. I mean, these people, Elon, wherever you go, if, you, if you're performing in any of the places that any of these people live in, I guarantee fucking T they're going to get front seat, you know, to see you. They're that long. What? Really? Yes. You can't even I'm guarantee that people will see you. I'm just the first person to come over to me after this and say, I saw you on the stuttering job. I love that interview. You know, like, that'll be. I guarantee <laughs> it'll happen. Wow. Do we have live radio? So how many times has Elon done his show at this point? I've seen him on a couple times. Really? I, I This is the first time I've seen him on there. But I, I love the fact that John is for some reason guaranteeing that people are going to get a front seat, whatever that means. <laughs> and he can't even spit out a sentence. He's so drunk at this point on the show. He's definitely this... going to come see you. <laughs> yeah. gonna, Things, do we know if there's more than 19 people watching this now? <gasps> well, of course there's going to be more. I'm joking, but do you know numbers now? Ah! <laughs> Elon. Elon. My, um, see, my regular show, I don't know if you wow. heard like, I pranked the... Pr I pranked Donald Trump and got him to uh, call me from there. Let me dodge this question. Remember that yeah. thing I did? Yeah. Holy it, shit. It's just a very direct question. Do you know how many people are watching the show right now? And John goes right to glory days. 
oh, well, uh, let me tell you what I accomplished. She's like, that's not has nothing to do with anything. <laughs> what do you mean? You're asking me about something that makes me sad, so I will <laughs> pivot to something that makes me happy. <laughs> Force one. Amazing, yeah. I made global news. Yep, you saw know, that. I've had over 2 million downloads to my yeah. show. Yeah. Can you pause you it know, real I've quick, been, Chrissy? No, I'm, 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 I'm downplaying. This is a little inside baseball, but John started Ooh. this podcast in 2017, 2018. So it's been on for four or five years. <laughs> Two million downloads over four or five years is actually not that great. It's it's actually not that impressive. Wow. I bet you and I have much bigger shows than that. I don't know. I don't know what my every time I'll get an I'll get an email every once in a while that I've hit another like million views on YouTube or something, but <laughs> Yeah. I think, <laughs> yeah, you see, see what I mean? See what I'm talking about? That's what I mean. This guy's bragging yeah. about two million downloads. You're like, yeah, every couple of weeks I get an email that says I've had a million view, more views. It's like, yeah, John's not as popular as he's pretending Oof. to be here. Damn, this is a redirect, though. This is a yeah. mega redirect. Yeah. Let's see if a line will fall for it. Your fame and, and popularity. I figured, out, I, figured out the, I figured out how to make money by sitting on my ass in my own house. That is the greatest thing in the world, and I'm I'm so happy for you. But my, my... <laughs> I also figured out that if you tell people that someone has cancer, <laughs> yeah, they I know. will donate to you. I figured out how to make money. I started a charity scam. <laughs> <It's> great. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you in on it. <laughs> point is i was saying 19 people it was the joke there could be 190,000 people there could be 1.9 million people watching this but my point is <laughs> do you know how many you're watching while you do this do you he know because like when i go live on instagram i know it's a 332 people yeah, are watching me like, like that because what's gonna happen now even though i have a which you know what you can't see because people like to post these can't shows see it. that are only for my channel members and post them all over the place. So it actually helps you get a ton more views. He's admitting <laughs> that the trolls who, like what we're watching right now, repost this stuff so we can goof on them. He's admitting that's a big portion of his audience. Yes, it is, John. <laughs> that's correct. Which you should that's embrace. Weird flex. <laughs> and I've gotten them taken down because because they try and do it for free. So when all the, like in on, like on Reddit and Discord, this YouTube. will be seen by a lot of people illegally. Illegally. But they love these illegally. Shows, so they post them. Because <laughs> these they are like these the, shows. you know. <laughs> yes, we do love your beer on the balconies, John. When we you get drunk and your guests goof on you to your face. We love it. It's great. We love it. How many people are watching? You would not understand because yeah. I have trolls. It's very it's a very complex algorithm. I can't tell you the number of people watch. It's like Elon probably has never used like StreamYard or Zoom or whatever. He, yeah, this is StreamYard. You can tell by yeah, the StreamYard, yep. the lower thirds here. So he can see the number. He knows the number. He absolutely knows. Yep. He doesn't want to admit it. He doesn't want to admit it. No, this is because every other show I do is non-political. This is my this is my one show where we, I just he get said to that talk wrong. to my friends. <laughs> non-political. Every other show he does is political. He goes, every other show I do is non-political. So he doesn't even know what he's talking about. He's such an idiot. He's an idiot. He should do waters on the balcony. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. He should do he should do Gatorade at the gym would be a good, uh, <laughs> good show for him to improve his life. Yeah. Smoothies on the balcony with John. <laughs> but and the only reason I haven't watched it, don't take offense, I don't watch any podcasts or, or listen to any. <laughs> and I definitely don't watch yours. Yeah. You'd be pretty low oh, on that boy. list if I started watching shows. How, like, he looks, like, exhausted. I don't know how long yeah. he's been on here, but, like, the, the fact that you have to, at any point, hold your own head during <laughs> a podcast appearance. Inside. Yeah, the body language. The last three beer on the balconies, we've gone over all of them. All He's three for three now with guests saying, are we done yet? And thinking <laughs> that the conversation's <laughs> over 30 minutes in. Oh, no. And John's saying, no, we still got another 30 minutes. And they're just like, oh, my God. What are we going to talk he about? He got so upset. There was this guy who came on who left, like, earlier than he had planned. And it ruined his whole day. Like, he was yep. so sour over it. I can't remember his name. But he was, like, a legit, like, working in Washington. Like, you could tell he snuck away. Yeah, it was found a little NBC reporter who was, right, he, he was actually reporting. And he's like, I got to yeah. go because there's something happening right now. And John's like, oh, well, now what am I going to do? There's something real going on. And tell your seven listeners. Uh, just that, was the one, I had to... that was the episode you were on, right? You and Frank? Yeah. Yeah, that was great. <laughs> it was really funny. Oh, my God. When John How has to he... fill time, it's the funniest part because he has no idea what to talk about. And he just sounds like a blithering idiot. 
how does he have all these these are still all contacts that he has from his time on stern and to the tonight show or is it just because he yeah is a verified twitter yeah so he, what he does because people have been documenting this what john does is he tweets at people all day long saying come on my show and uh, okay some idiots like a lot and he's learned his lesson go sure john i'll come on your show you know and then they realize yeah. oh that was dumb <laughs> Then they're like, how many people are watching this? I'll never know. It's a mystery. It's uh, I need to do a software update so I cannot see the number. We we didn't really stop it at the time, but one of the things that Elon said it was so funny. He goes, well, I'll be waiting for the day when somebody tells me that they saw me on the Stuttering John podcast. <laughs> and uh, Honestly, that's one of the funniest thing anyone's ever said on Stuttering John's show. Don't yeah. hold your breath, buddy. <laughs> It's not going to happen. Uh, from Corn Pop, I'm not banned uh, on Chrissy Mayer. Do you want to be banned, Corn Pop? Uh, I'm confused. Anthony B. Set John is a gold mine, but he doesn't realize it. Yup. True. Crash Mondo. Beloved Chatter replied to you on Twitter. Really? <gasps> is it at Beloved Chatter? <laughs> Who did it? Where is Beloved Chatter? Because they could just set up their own GoFundMe. We I'll don't give money need... to Beloved Chatter. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't see them. I don't see them. Hold on. Let me look them up. Beloved Chatter. I hope somebody did it. <gasps> somebody did it! Oh! <laughs> Ooh, this is great. Wow, I love the internet. Let me pull this up. Everybody go follow Beloved Chatter. He looks like Kevin Spacey. You all know okay. me. You all love me. Please donate to my spouse's very expensive chemo treatments by sending funds to Stuttering John m via paypal oh can i show you something really funny chrissy You're yes gonna love this. i haven't i haven't this talked so about great. this on the show yet I'm okay send it to you in the private chat <gasps> Ooh. somebody created a website for john's lawyer it's it's called jd dabbles and associates <laughs> oh my god oh my god <laughs> you have to pull this out it's so funny <gasps> oh my god the tagline is legal expertise even a substitute teacher could afford oh my fucking god <laughs> so the whole website jd dabbles and associates get on the path to shady representation today <laughs> free consultation this is exactly who i would have imagined about us aggressive representation we're the big dog in town we go after them all from major broadcasting companies to trolls using the r word slur in your live stream <laughs> we don't back down from a fight no matter how inconsequential a focus on results a thirty thousand dollar settlement with the insurance company of a security the security firm which was hired by sharon stone in 1998 our record of success for our client lists uh for our clients for speak our clients. For itself. a <laughs> yeah. client singular do you know, do you know about that story do you know what this that was to? Sirius XM did a bodyguard of Sharon Stone beat him up or something well yeah back when John was on K-Rock with Howard Stern okay. he got hit by Sharon Stone's bodyguard he sued for like 250,000 or 300,000 dollars and then accepted a settlement of what he claimed in his book was fifteen thousand dollars, but now he's saying it's thirty thousand. I think he's getting confused, but he's claiming that as a legal victory because Anthony goes, Damn. "Dude, you, you've never won a lawsuit. Go ahead and sue me." Just like, nope, that's not true. I got thirty thousand dollars. <laughs> that's not winning a lawsuit, John. They're just like, "Here's some money. Go away. All right, buddy. We don't, we don't want to deal with it." And wasn't this all done by Sirius then, and uh, not really him? Oh, pro. Well, yeah, probably K Rock did it. Yeah, John never oh, okay. worked for Sirius XM. He he left before they moved over. Okay. Wow. Get started today. Don't wait. Contact us for a free phone consultation. Let us help you figure out who to threaten legal action <laughs> against next. Former employees, anonymous super chatters, and ex shock jocks are all fair game. Oh uh, my god. I mean, you, don't, you don't have to read the whole site, but everything about this site is hilarious. Uh. <laughs> The about us this is great. Is so good. Current cases. <laughs> Patreon and Jack Conti. <laughs> Box searchlight pictures. Johnny Wood homeless. A sad and vicious chatter. <laughs> <laughs> the criminal. Oh my God. This is really good. This is like really thoughtful. Our practice, personal attorney, an injury, workplace harassment, wrongful death. You know what's great is that John cannot be funny. He has no ability to be <laughs> funny or amusing. But everyone who's goofing on John is hilarious. You go to Dan was yeah. anonymous. They're they're making Twitter accounts. They got websites for yes. security now. It's great. It's the such amount a fun of community. 
the amount of creativity that has come that has been inspired by stuttering john yeah. uh it eclipses whatever he's created uh but by it's far. more fun <laughs> yeah totally. who is this guy is this is this a random <laughs> lawyer I yeah i don't know <laughs> wow i want him representing me though this is so funny client reviews is it just john oh yes yeah. stuttering john melendez Susanna melendez those are all the uh, <laughs> testimonials. I'm not going to say how much, but it was a lot. I got that with the help of my friend, Jimmy Dabbles. <laughs> oh, fuck. And then you scroll down to uh, success stories. It's got SiriusXM appeal in motion. So <laughs> John tried to sue SiriusXM for right of publicity. It was this weird thing. And it was thrown out with prejudice. And Oof. so they, they appealed it. And for some reason, they actually allowed them to appeal it. And so they argued their case in front of a three judge panel and it's going nowhere. They had no case. <laughs> it's getting thrown out. But John still talks about it like it's going to happen. Damn. Wow. This is hilarious. Whoever yeah, did it's, that. It's props great. to you. Props to you. Okay. So you're not worried about anything. No. 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 But you know what? The, the harassment's annoying because, you know, he's trying to get my Patreon taken down. He's trying to get our YouTube channel taken down and. Now he's going after Shuli pretty heavily. And yeah. it's just annoying. You know, it's just one more thing I have to deal with. And Shuli apparently, like, held back, he says, for a very long time. The first time Shuli came on my show. So Shuli left the Howard Stern show, and we connected. And I said, I'd love to have you on my show. And I, I talked to him. Anytime I talk to someone who knows people in the industry, I have this conversation. Hey, is it cool if we bring up blah, blah, blah? You know, because I yeah. just don't want to, like, put someone on the spot. And then they're, they don't want to say anything. And it sucks for the show. Right. He goes, he goes, look at Carl. I am taking the high road on John. He's talked so much shit about me. I am not even going to address it. I go, that's fine. I understand. Take the high road. But John just kept hitting Shuli to the point where Shuli's like, all right, gloves are off, motherfucker. <laughs> and now he's got the Uncle Rico show that he's doing with Bob Levy and Mike Morris. And it's hilarious because they're just grabbing every clip from Dabbler's Anonymous and wow. fucking with John. And it's really funny. That's great. Yeah, that's what happens. He, he he harasses people till they get to the point where they're like, "All right, I I guess I'm in this too now." Yeah. Oh yeah. He's got so many people. So so you know, Anthony's been on it quite a bit. You're on it. The ROTC guys are on this pretty regularly. Who are the ROTC guys? Revenge oh of the oh Sis, oh, Royce and Mersh. Yeah. yeah. I oh every time someone says ROTC, I think of like the Army R right. ROTC. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Revenge of the Sis, those guys are hilarious. Mersh is doing videos on his uh, Nightwave channel. And of course, WATP. If we don't get to Stuttering John, I get so many angry messages really? from people. Yeah, because we had um, your buddy, Pat Dixon, over the other day. And, oh, uh, how did that go? It went really was, well. We during did a, a, his exile, he came by or like you, you like Skyped him in? No, he came to Rochester for the roast we did. Oh, here wow. at the comedy club. Okay. It was great. So then he came over to my house uh, to the studio. We did a, um, a crossover show. So we did a New York City crime report along with WTP. But because we did the crossover, we did all the crime report stuff. And then we had a, another caller come in. I was like, all right, well, I have, I have all the Suttering John stuff, but we're already two hours in. So I'm not going to get to it. That pissed people off. Oh, no. It's like we have to talk about Suttering John to see what he's up to. And trust me, this weekend, because of what he's going after Anthony, we'll have much to discuss on Suttering John. Okay, good, good. Yeah. I'll be looking forward to that. And where can people find like new episodes? Like when do you, now you're doing twice a week. Right. We usually drop episodes Sunday before the Bills game, Sunday noonish, and uh, Thursdays. We record on Saturdays and, and um, Wednesdays. And people who subscribe on our Patreon or our Supercast can watch us do it live. We stream it live to those folks. Everyone else can get the uh, audio versions after we edit them and put them out. And they sound nice and, and are well edited and all that kind of stuff. And you can find that wherever you get podcasts at uh, Who Are These Podcasts is the name. Or if you go to whoarethese.com, we have all of the episodes listed up there. As well as all the videos from our YouTube channel, uh, Who Are These Podcasts on YouTube. We put all the choice cuts up there. Yes, he does have a YouTube channel. And Carl will be at the Orlando Content House yes, at the end I'm of next month. Looking forward to that. I booked my flight for that, but I have to move it. That's why I haven't gotten back to you yet. I got to get, okay. get on that. Okay, that's all good. Yeah, it's, it's all gonna good. Be, I'm looking forward to that. It's going to be fire. Yes. Yeah. That's awesome. I think Thanks we might have me. to rent a, a short bus or a regular bus to bring people to um, 
the Orlando improv show, like from the house, because if there's going to be like a lot of people, uh, I might have to set that up. Yeah. Maybe yeah. I'll I'll get like a drunken party bus or something. Hey, do you have any listeners in uh, the Detroit area, Chrissy? Are you big in Detroit? I'm sure I do. We're doing a live show September 30th at the Magic Bag in Ferndale, Michigan. Magic there, Bag. There are only a few tickets left for that. Ooh, that's, that's going to sell out. And that what's so that's that date exciting. again? September 30th. September 30th. That is coming up. And then the next night, I'm bringing my uh, instrumental rock band, the Isotopes, to Ooh. Michigan. And we're playing at a place called Otis Supply. Wow. And you can get tickets. So that's October 1st if you want to see me play uh, guitar. The Isotopes are playing October 1st at Otis Supply in uh, Ferndale, Michigan. How often do you do uh, like musical gigs? Well, I was just in the uh, studio with my other band these last two days, just finished up doing a, a four song EP. And um, so I, I play in two bands. I have a gig this tomorrow night. Um, so yeah, it's it's pretty regular. Wow, look at you. You're like a triple threat. That's why I'm not calling Centering John's school that he subs at. I'm very busy. You're very, <laughs> I'm a very busy. busy man. You're a podcaster, <laughs> you're a musician, and you're a troll. <laughs> yeah, and I, I wear them all proudly. Uh, Young Fei Chang, rest in peace, Chrissy's vocal cords being in the fryer for the rest of the day. A worthy sacrifice for funny impressions. <laughs> it's easy to do. It's just... Well, what producer Chris describes it as, he's just doing McGruff the crime dog. That's all it is. <laughs> it doesn't sound anything like John, and it doesn't even matter because it's just funny. Oh, fuck. Oh, my God. Corn Pop still not banned. I don't understand. I don't understand what you want, dude. Do you want to be banned? Now I'm not banning you ever. Uh, Anthony B. Thanking Stut John for WATP Chrissy Shuley Dabbler. Yeah. He's really I've, brought I've, us all together, hasn't he? It's it, amazing. We've just together like a blanket. Yeah. Like a like a like a beautiful quilt. <laughs> he should so just embrace it. Uh, I don't know what your thoughts are about Mormons or OnlyFans, Carl. But a Mormon mom was shunned by the church after being outed as an OnlyFans star claims she is now an online mistress to religious husbands who pay to have virtual sex with her. Wow. Leaning into it. I like that. Holly Jean, 39, from California, has ma claimed married Mormon and Catholic fans are paying her for virtual sex on OnlyFans, saying that she is their online mistress. <gasps> Mother of four makes 45000 a month posting on a subscription site. She secretly revealed... Oh, recently revealed that a fellow churchgoer snitched on her antics to their local bishop and she was forced to choose between church and her career. It's a no brainer. <laughs> Duh. A month. Yeah. Yeah. Holly said she was shunned by the Mormon church after refusing to give up her OnlyFans account. This is what happens. Like when you make somebody choose, like like with this girl Allie Ray that I interviewed, she was a nurse. They're like, you can either be a nurse or OnlyFans. And she'd be like, Well, I'm making fucking six figures on well, more than that, probably. I think she's a millionaire. She's making a bank on OnlyFans. She's like, all right, I guess I'm done. She's got, you know, I'm going to hang up the scrubs. Easy, easy decision there. Also, I, I, there is a shelf life to OnlyFans. And you so think? you, you got to get it while the getting's good. Then you can get back to the church later on. You know, when you're in your late 40s or mm -hmm. early 50s, get back into that church going thing. They'll have you back. They're yeah, desperate you're, for people. She's it's 39. Fun. She doesn't have a lot of good OnlyFans years left in her. That's my point. Yes, yeah, so I was trying to be polite about it. Uh, <laughs> she has 20 dedicated regulars. I think that's more than Stuttering John. <laughs> as well she has beloved chat as uh, um, beloved... how many people are watching your cooch right now do you know that number can you tell Be me that number <laughs> beloved fapper as well <laughs> as thousands of other followers some to whom ask her to dress in sunday church clothes yeah it's their kink wow is there a photo of this one? oh yes she looks kind of like the older sister of zia okay i'll take um, your word like, on that by this aesthetic like zia anderson Oh, just, I, you're not, I thought you were talking about an actual person. You're just saying if she had an older sister. I got right, you. right. Yeah, I, um, I get that. She got okay, a great well, rack. Wow, she does. Well done. Good job. She's a single mom. See, it's always a single mom. She has over sixty-one thousand followers on Instagram. Claims the restrictions don't stand in the way of her lucrative OnlyFans career, which makes. <gasps> Wait a second! I thought it was forty-five thousand dollars a year. No, she makes forty-five thousand a month. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's a no-brainer decision. Pick one or the other. Like, okay, yeah, I'm gonna do this thing over here. <gasps> I was impressed with forty-five thousand a year. <laughs> yeah. 
Damn. So do you think her kids are really happy that someone outed her? That's really polite for them. Like, whoever the snitch right. is is a fucking asshole. I hate Tattletales so Mom much. Mom of four. I wonder how old the kids are. Tattletales are the worst. They are. Let her do her thing. Let let them let the Mormon mom be on OnlyFans. It's always people. It's, I think it's other jealous women that do the majority of the outing because it's like dudes yes. are going to be like, oh, like well now I'm going to look like a creep if I acknowledge that I've seen the account. I was perusing OnlyFans the other day. <laughs> yeah. I happened to notice a familiar I was face. Looking for sinners, and <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I jerked off, and then I was like, you know what? This woman needs to be stopped. <laughs> yeah. I'm no longer horny, and I do not like that this woman's making a living from this. She's cute. She is. Let her do her thing. She has no plans to stop. Hey, Chrissy, I'm knackered. Uh, what does knackered mean? Is this a slur? <laughs> oh, gosh. That sounds like a Mormon talk. Na yeah, is this a Mormon slur, knacker? Knacker, please. <laughs> you can't use that word. Only Mormons could use that word, Chrissy. Right, right. Very I'm going to say knacka. I can't say with the... <laughs> Hard R. Didn't uh, Suttering John accuse you of having an OnlyFans account at one point? Yes. This is it's so upsetting to you me. You should he sue saw, him. I will assist. sue him. He saw a picture of me on a boat. He's like, oh, she's fat. She has a gun. Uh, How funny was that when he's talking to, he's talking to Kevin suit. Brennan? And he's he's going, yeah, she's fat. She's horrible. Kevin's going, is she? What? She is. It's <laughs> 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 so funny. She's the reaction is so funny. wearing a two-piece. And I'm like. I did not wear a two piece publicly until this summer. So fact check wrong. <laughs> That's what you're offended by. <laughs> I am offended. I was like, it took a lot for me to be like, all right, I have the I have the guts to display myself. Wow. She has no plans to stop. Good for her, girl. Keep doing it. She's cute. Let her do her thing. Uh there's gonna be some OnlyFans girls at the content house. So yes. maybe we can we'll do a collab. There'll be a pool. There's a there's a pool. There's a hot tub. I definitely um, want to do an episode of Who Are These Podcasts while we're yes, there. Yes. For sure. So yes. When, we, when the girls put their assholes away, we could do some jokes for a little <laughs> bit. And then get right back to assholes. I wonder. So at what point in the 48 hours would be best? What do you think would work? Like if we, right, if we snuck in a Who yep. Are These Pods during the 48 hours and like everybody can basically do episodes of their show within the stream. I usually do 2 p.m. on Saturdays. Hey, we could just That'd straight up cool. do that. Yeah. That'd be cool. That's when people usually tune in. So that's great. Wow. See, that's the thing is people go, oh, I should start an OnlyFans. It doesn't, you don't have to be nude, just post photos. No, it will never. I know, I understand how men work. Like you are constantly pushing boundaries. And let's say if I post like a cute, like little something it's gonna be like oh i want to see your asshole and it like it never ends um you know who has an only fans rachel dolaja is that how you pronounce her name i'm, I'm drawing dolazal dolazal the, the woman who pretended to be black the white woman no. she has an only fans account now <gasps> is it just and, her in blackface and she <laughs> and she claims to not get naked on it whoa rachel dolazal dolazal only fans Oh my God. Reddit is already on top of it. Yeah. And I, I guess it's popular. I mean, she seems to have a following on there for some reason. Could you imagine Chrissy being famous <laughs> for lying about your race and now you're making money from that? You should be shocked, uh, well, I would think. Damn. This is everybody's pivot. Like if, if you fail at something as a woman, you can always turn to OnlyFans. It's a really nice safety net. Yeah. No shit. Oh my God! Here we go. Yes, it's yes, it's true. By the very reputable New York Post, Rachel Dolezal launches OnlyFans for. Don't worry, just foot pics and squats. Oh, gross! <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that she was she was known for her feet. I didn't know that. Uh, imagine her feet are like super white. Yeah, well, the bottoms usually are. Either way, right? Everyone's yeah, that's true. <laughs> She's dipping a toe into OnlyFans. Yeah. See, if she's on OnlyFans for her feet, I should be on OnlyFans for my feet. I was a legit foot model. Is that true? It's true. Oh, it's I didn't know paid that. very little. Um, <laughs> yeah, it paid like $50 an hour, but they would only have me in for like 15 minutes at a time. <laughs> See, I didn't know that you were a foot model, but I did know there was something going on there because when you type into Google Chrissy Mayer, it will auto extend it to... Chrissy Mayer's feet. Like Damn. apparently people search that 
quite often. Wow. And Google has learned that. I feel like I'm just stepping on money over here. Yeah, you're wasting you're wasting your time with this uh bra. Oh, look at her shit. crazy ass forehead. Ugh. She's a hot mess. Yeah, she's she better keep the OnlyFans just to her feet. I don't think anybody wants to see the rest of this. Wow, how lame. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not judging anybody who's on OnlyFans, but it's like I would judge myself, I think. Oh, no, I'm judging her for, for pretending she was black. That's why I'm judging her. <laughs> yeah, that's, of course. That's the thing, right. Exactly. The, Batman has perfectly stated my feeling here. Keep your butthole covered, because once we see it, your mystery is gone. I feel like a lady has to protect her butthole at all costs. If Frank could just draw it for us, that would be all we need. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He just draws like a picture of the Grand Canyon. <laughs> Anthony B. Carmen Electra is an OnlyFan multimillionaire. Right, that's the thing though, but they make so much money. That's the part that makes you go... Mm. A very small percentage of them. It's one of those things where, you know, the top 0.1% makes some money and everyone else makes nothing. Damn. That would be so embarrassing if I joined and then, like, didn't do well. I'd hang my head in shame. Oh, that'd be hilarious. Should oh do it for the goof. <laughs> Definitely. Um, okay. All right. Part of me doesn't want to let you go, just like Stuttering John. I know, I know. I, I have to get moving, but I, I really appreciate yeah. you having me on today. Thanks for all the notice, too. It was awesome. Thank you for coming on <laughs> on such late notice. Yeah, appreciate no, you so much. You're so much fun. I'm so happy you're coming to the content house. I'm so bummed to miss the show on October 16th 15th. in New York City. Fuck! 15th. <laughs> October 15th, we'll be at the City Winery in Manhattan, New York City. Um, you can get tickets on whoarethese.com for that show, and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. We do a live version of Who Are These Podcasts. It's, we don't fuck around, Chrissy. We do no, it upright. We do it upright. We, we do a live show with lots of different guest co-hosts coming up, and it's going to be a good time. Will um, Dr. Steve be there? He will not be there. He was at our roast that we did. Okay. And by the way, Dr. Steve was the funniest guy on the roast. Wow, because, really? Can people yeah. watch it? Can I watch it? Like, did you tape it at all or no? We did tape it. Um, it's available right now in audio form on the Creep Off Patreon, patreon.com okay. slash the Creep Off, the other show I do, uh, which, by the way, thanks for reminding me because Vinny gets pissed when I don't plug that. Um, but it will, I will have the video out soon. But it, what's great about Dr. Steve is that he comes up and uh, apparently he got Jim Norton and Rich Voss to write jokes for him. So nice. he's just murdering with these jokes. Oh. And he's, he was acting all shy and insecure before the set. And they're like, you motherfucker. Just crushes all of us. Yeah, he asked me to write a couple jokes for him, too, like about Pat. I just, like, didn't have time at all. So I'm glad he got some good help there. You don't you don't already have jokes written for that? I'm surprised. Yeah, it's just like, I don't know. I'm like you. I don't have time to, like, delve into it. <sighs> yeah, Dr. Steve was very upset he can't come. He, he said that uh, he wants to come to all of our live shows. He came to the show in Chicago. He came to our show in Nashville. But we can't come to Detroit or New York because he says that his wife will leave him. Wow, because he, he oh, can't. he doesn't want to get robbed. He wants to be safe. What a loser. No, just because, like, he can't be traveling around following who are these podcasts like he's a deadhead Why in, the, not? in the 70s. <laughs> I know. He That's can't be a roadie. <laughs> right? <laughs> anyway. um, Carl is the man. You're correct, Anthony. Um, Okay. Where else can people follow you? On Twitter at who are these pod. pod. Yeah, it's a weird Twitter handle. I didn't create it. It's good, though. It's all good. It's Find us good. everywhere. Who are these dot com is where you get links to all of our stuff. We have a, a active subreddit, active Discord server. We're doing it all, Chrissy. Awesome. I have a Discord too, and sometimes I'm on it for six hours unknowingly. <laughs> yeah. Just on the audio channel. Uh, all right. Thanks so much for Thank having you, me. Thank you, Carl. Love You're the you. Best. Bye. Bye. You're the best. Bye. Nobody's better than Carl. Yes. What's up? Good night, mister. A, a dab head. Yeah, I have a Discord, too. Okay. Discord.gg slash Chrissy Mayer official. Check it out. Oh, and also, yeah, you're correct, NVIDIA. Check out Flagrant Triggers for your Chrissy Mayer shirt needs. I will share the page so you can look at it. Oh, my God. X-Ray Girl has a shirt now, too. Good for her. It's Go Tit. You can get the Go Tit X-Ray Girl shirt. Oh, I'm, I like that she's on here. And the Chrissy Mayer shirts are here on flagrantriggers.com. You can get the Johnny Dabbler shirt. Keep dabbling. I should send one of these to Carl. 
That's a good idea. Maybe he'll have one waiting for him at the content house as a surprise. Well, unless he's still listening, then it won't be a surprise. Uh, get the rootin' for Putin shirt, the Simcast shirt, Mayor, Mayor, Smayer, and make America great again. Go to flagrantriggers.com. $27 includes shipping. These shirts are super duper soft and come in a variety of very wearable colors. None of the gay colors. Just the good ones. Yes, I will surprise him. Oh my God, I'm obsessed with this. How many followers does Beloved Chatter have? Let me check the follower count. Six already. Okay, all right. It's getting up there. You guys got to all follow Beloved Chatter. Why is Matt Gates always trending? Like, why do people hate him so much? Sex trafficking? Uh, that's, I don't know. I just find that to be like kind of a boring topic. Because I just feel like there's so much of it going on. Like, where do you even begin? Okay, okay. I like talking about fluffy topics. Like this. And I like bagging on Gen Z. So this article has it all. Woke Gen Z is out to destroy entertainment. What else is new? Generation Z? More like Generation Buzzkill. <laughs> Good one. Thanks to this little army of introverted scolds, the future of TV and films is even more dire than post-pandemic viewership struggles and the box office slump at the movies have suggested. A horrifying new study from UCLA queried Gen Z's ages, ages 13 to 18, those overly mature children of the corn born between 04 and 09 about their viewing habits in the downer conclusion pretty much is enjoying anything fun and flighty that's over 90 seconds. Uh, long while you still can oh wow if trends persist soon our favorite escapist diversions will be rarer than a unicycle on the highway or a new york, new york street corner that doesn't reek of pot the youth you see wish to replace avatar and elvis with tiktok dances little miss memes and social justice screeds because of the internet and msnbc don't give us enough of those already z demands more the study notes that teens resoundingly rejected aspirational stories wow <laughs> So they're like clinically uh, depressed all the time, meaning enjoyable yarns about frivolous people who are wealthier than they are. Think classical musical comedies like Anything Goes or costume dramas such as Downton Abbey. You know, enjoyable things. These kooky kids come claim to be to prefer depressing real life stories chock full of relevant womp womp issues. That tracks. Teens are obsessed with euphoria on HBO. Unless, God forbid, Sydney Sweeney throws a hoe down in a barn. That series starring. Uh, Zendaya deals with high school age, drug, sex, abuse, and even toxic positivity. So they don't like fun. Gen Z doesn't enjoy fun. They also flock to sex education on Netflix, a show that grapples with teenage sexuality issues. Kind of looks like Venti. Um, wow. Okay. Watch out, House of Dragon. <laughs> I am watching this about fictional incestuous warring royals. Gen Z wants you to go up in flames. Okay. So they don't like fantasy and they don't like fiction. That is of course, they're actually watching TV or films at all. 2021 Deloitte survey found that just 10% of Gen Zers ranked those past times as their number one home entertainment pick. Unlike every other previous generation, these dweebs prefer such intellectual pursuits as social media, web browsing and video games. I mean, yeah. What do you expect? This is a generation of kids who were raised uh, in front of a screen at all times. That is still true in 2022 is shocking over the several, last several years. We all became well too acquainted with doom scrolling, angry online spats and forgetting how to talk to other human beings in person. Sensible adults are currently trying to undo the damage yet. Gen Z wants to jam the knife in even further, staring at their phones all day, obsessing over the news and looking upon fun as repellent and evil. We can, I hope, I suppose, that as they age, they'll grow out of it and acquire some, well, taste. After all, the countercultural hi hippies of yore are now looking forward to Der Rosen Cavalier, what the fuck, at the Met, and I hope to never be subjected to millions of 45-year-old men and women filling themselves doing the threading dance. But youth-obsessed Hollywood is so prone to knee-jerk reactions these days that big, damaging changes are likely afoot. Soon, every TV show and film will be mind-numbingly woke and boring. It already is. And aimed at consumers who won't even watch them. I.e. 
She-Hulk. Meanwhile, you and I will regale our grand our grandchildren with stories of com quote comedies and science fiction while they cancel us on Snapchat. Oh yeah. Yeah, they are introverted scolds. I mean, yeah. What, is, what do you expect? Every time if every time you go out to dinner, you're sitting your kid in front of a screen. That's why it's like if I ever have a kid, I really want to drive home the importance of like reading every night. Like I think what my brother does with his kids is really good. Like they read every night no matter what. My brother my brother was also kind of a nerd growing up, but like in a good way. I think he's helping them build really good habits. And like his wife wants to teach them about money and stuff. Like, you know, shit that we never learned about. So Anthony B. Jen destroyed Pixar movie. So sad. Aw. You should trademark Dabbler. How would I? No. Dabbler is for everyone. Dabbler is a communal word. I mean, it's <laughs> it was a word that existed. It was already a word. Yeah, what are we going to do? I still feel like I have so many books that I haven't read. Like, I'm constantly ordering books. And, like, for every, I think, three books I order, I have time to read one of them. And then the rest just build up to the side here and um, over there. And, look, it's a thing of papers that I haven't organized. And stuffed animals and other things. More stuffed animals. But I always feel like I have work to do and uh, there's something more important than reading. But reading is so important. I think I just have to make more time to do it. So, yeah. Okay, it's freezing down here. Why is it fall already? Where is the book that you were able to fit in your pajamas? What do you mean? What do you mean by that? I'm reading right now um, Alex Jones's New World Order book. He signed it. He wrote like, love you, Alex Jones. I also had him sign one for my mother-in-law. NVIDIA, office tour. Office tour. Do you guys even really, I don't think you want to see this. Do, 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 papers. Laundry out there. There's the lights. There's the other light. There's my bed. There's my ad read. And we're back. Here we go. Now you see how the donuts are made. Your late night stream. What are you talking about? Oh, the one with the body language? You finished the book already. It's insane. His trial is a farce. Oh, yeah. They just want to get him. Just like with Stacey Abrams is now um, bringing up that bullshit with Trump. They're just trying to, like, tie him up and uh, make him look bad before the election. His whole, like, real estate um, lawsuit thing. He's asking about when you showed off your PJs in your drunk midnight stream. Oh, yeah. I think they might have been on that pile over there. That pile of clothes. Loves the flag and lamp. Thank you. Yeah. I don't have a candle burning today because I was in a rush. Where's When is your show on Compound? Oh, thank God you asked. Mondays on at 7 p.m. on Compound Media. Watch the wet spot. Got a lot of fun guests coming up. Oh, Frank is texting me. Matthew Hammond. Hello, Chrissy. It's great to see you this morning. You should buy some heavy whipping cream and make your own sweet cream. Wow, what a good idea. You could use stevia instead of sugar to sweeten it and add other ingredients. What a good idea, Matthew Hammond. I am going to do that. And I can put it on when I make a homemade pie because I am determined to get back into my pie habit. My pie career. That's what I'm going to do. So, yeah, Compound Media, 7 p.m. on Mondays. Who's going to be on the show this Monday, you ask? I'll tell you who. 
Nicole Dashi, Shuli, and Auntie Liss, and then Simcast. Tune into Simcast this Sunday to see Liberty Doll, Lydia Smith, or no, she's married now, so she probably has a different last name. Isabella DeLuca and Leanne Starr. That's just a star-studded cast. And then next weekend, I'll be in New Orleans at the Comedy House New Orleans. Going to be fun. Going to be good. Well, I'm freezing. Why is it so cold in here? Nicole Dashie is being moved a week. Ah, okay. Okay. Yeah, this is going to be a good sim cast. We got a lot of people. All right, so we'll just have Shuli and Auntie Liss for the 26th. Wow, and I thought that show was going to be overbooked. No, Violin Cabinet will never be fired. Yes, Liberty Doll. <gasps> Cooking with Chrissy, this is a great idea. I really do want to make a pie. Did you see the Dems block the reps? Republicans from opening an investigation into Hunter Biden because it's just a petty partisan witch hunt. Oh my God. Are you freaking kidding me? Yet they're going to sue all of Trump's kids along with him because of like basically shit that everybody in real estate does. Wow. That is wild. Let me look that up. I'm going to look it up. Okay, what I do see is this article. Hunter did nothing wrong. Uh, New York Magazine's Olivia N Newsy. It's embarrassing that the media accepted the Hunter Biden laptop was Russian disinformation. Uh, yeah. New York published a lengthy story by Andrew Rice and Olivia Nuzzi headlined Newsy headlined the sordid saga of Hunter Biden's laptop. That received praise from Fourth Watch editor Steve Krakauer, a media watchdog. I wonder how many readers of New York Magazine will still believe the story was Russian disinformation. Probably a lot of them because they're not going out of their way truly to correct it and have it be like front page news for a week or two. How many people have missed the bits and pieces of the reporting by the Washington Post, CNN, and others for more than 18 months that have verified the laptop and still think it was fake because of how the story was handled in October of 2020? Yeah, the laptop was dismissed and uh, as unreliable and even Russian dif disinformation by mainstream print and TV outlets, including MSNBC and CNN. Twitter and Facebook blocked or limited sharing of the New York Post article. I thought it was embarrassing that the mainstream media had been so eager to accept and so relieved to have the excuse of the theory that it was Russian disinfo. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I've always been interested in our knee-jerk deference to the intelligence community and how we never learn any lessons related to that. I had reflected a lot about what it would look like if this had been Donald Trump Jr. And I had no trouble whatsoever picturing myself sitting on a cable panel alongside professional pundits and nodding along as someone with the credibility to say uh, Don's laptop was a threat to national security and contributing. Right, because you work, he works so closely. Anybody in the family works so closely um, with the president. Like, how can they not? contributing an agreement in such a discussion and absolutely meaning it. It's very, very easy to get caught in a talking point trap to participate in popular political discourse and to do so semi-thoughtfully with original analysis and to never challenge the foundation of the conversation. Whoa. What a douche. This is like the best picture of him that exists. Wow. He's actually like smiling and his both sides of his face look even. He's always doing like that half smile. Wow. Yeah, they're not going to go out of their way to like overcorrect themselves. Be like, yeah, we were wrong. Do Anthony B. There's a video of Hunter with Coke and prostitutes. Oh, I saw it. Oh, I saw it. I saw all the videos, all the photos. Mm hmm. Bye for Frank from Young Pei Chang. We always got Frank Simps in the chat. 
He deserves all the simps. You've been watching the really old simcasts. They're dope. Oh, wow. Thank you. Isn't it funny that the really old simcasts like aren't even a year old? Yeah, I got to do a cooking show. It's a great idea. Trump's suit is civil, not criminal, not enough evidence. Yep, yep, good point. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to wrap this up. Guys, watch Friday Night Tides later, 4.30 p.m. Eastern on Nerd Rodic's YouTube channel. I'm going to go put a sweater on. Because it's cold. Uh, see you in New Orleans next weekend at the Comedy House. Those shows are going to be great. And we will talk soon. Bye.